The second Corinthians 13 chapter and verse 5 and 6. This is a passage that we've been using for the last two weeks. This third week, we'll move into the next few weeks. These are the scriptures we're building. And I hope these scriptures get in your spirit so much that you just be able to say them without even looking most of the time. But the Bible teaches us, number one, I'm, the title of my series is, How Do You View Yourself? And the scripture says to examine yourself, to see whether you are in the faith, to test yourself. Do you not realize that Christ Jesus is in you? How many realize that Jesus Christ is in you this morning? Amen? Unless, of course, you fail the test. How many of you have ever failed a test? Don't raise your hands. But hey, I failed a few tests in my life. Amen? And verse 6 says this. It says, And I trust that you will discover that we have not failed the test. Because it's important that you are tested but it's another thing that you do not fail. Amen? And we got to examine ourselves in every area of our life. The first week we talked about being an overcomer. And the last week we talked about being a woman of faith. And, and how that God desires you to be a, a woman of faith. But also, men, we need to be of the faith. Amen? And, and we today need to examine ourselves. And it's easy to say, are you light or darkness? And everybody would say, I'm light. No problem. I got that one. Light is easy. So today as you view yourself, I'm not asking you to view the neighbor beside you or the neighbor behind you or the neighbor that's at, not here today. I'm asking you to view yourself, all right? To look at yourself today. Because the Bible tells me in Matthew 5, 16, it says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. Hello. I'm going to tell you this, whether you like it or not, somebody's watching you. I'm going to say it one more time. Somebody is watching you. Amen. Whether good works or bad works are coming out, they're watching you. But it's our place as Christians to shine so before men that they may see our good works and glorify our Father in heaven. So today, there is a, there's a story I want to tell you about before I get started. There was a German atheist. And he once said these, these, these words. I want you to hear it. He once said, if he saw more redeemed people, he might be inclined to believe in the Redeemer. How do you view yourself? How do you view yourself? How do you view yourself? I'm the redeemed. I'm the light. An atheist is saying if he saw more redeemed people, he might be more inclined to believe in the Redeemer. We are representatives of Jesus Christ whether we like it or not. Amen. So we got it. We got to come up in here. But the thing is, also, he said, Christians who do not have changed lives have a credibility gap. It's one thing to say I'm a Christian. It's another thing to be a Christian. I'm gonna say it again. It's one thing to say I'm a Christian. It's another thing to be a Christian. Amen. I, I he he goes on to talk about this, and he says, I'll put it this way: How would you like? If I had a great auto mechanic, and, and I told you about this auto mechanic was so great, but then my car was still belching black smoke out of the exhaust, would you be reluctant to use and to trust my mechanic? A lot of Christians are still blowing some black smoke. they still belching out the back, amen, in the front. You won't hear that anywhere else in Northwest Arkansas. But I tell you, there's a lot of smoke coming out of people, and it ain't the right smoke. You'd probably be reluctant to trust that mechanic. So what good does it do to tell people how great your Savior is if they cannot see that we ourselves have been saved from sin? What good does it do to tell them I'm saved and I'm a Christian if I'm not going to shine? It says, let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify my Father which is in heaven. So when you're out and about every day, I'm not talking about Sunday morning because all y'all walk in here today is shining. <laughs> let my little light shine. Come Monday, put it under a bushel, yes. Come Tuesday, put it under a bushel, yes. Come Wednesday, I might little glimpse of a little bit of, oh, they might know I'm more than that. Then Thursday and then Friday hits and we really hide, amen. Then we're like, don't let Satan. 
And he blows it out by Friday and Saturday. And we come in on Sunday morning. We're like, come on, preacher, give me a message. Because I've been, I've been through a weekend. Why have you been through that weekend? It's because your light had not been shining. Amen? Come on. I'm just building up here. We all should have that light shining through our lives if our actions reflect the nature of Christ. So let me tell you some nature of Christ. You may tell you something. Listen to me. Let's see if we're really, really where we should be. How many Christians do you see really loving? Am I preaching to the church this morning? So how many Christians do you see really loving? Amen. How many do you see that have compassion? See, it's easy to have, it's easy to have love when everything is good. Oh, come on. When everything is good and relationship is great, it's so easy to say, I love you. But it's a lot harder when things ain't going right and things are rough and things are tough and things are happening. And it's hard to love sometimes. But you got to find it in your heart because it's the nature of Christ that we love. It's also in the nature of Christ that we have compassion. It's also in the nature of Christ that we have forgiveness. I say one more time, we got to have forgiveness. I say it again, amen. Because I'm telling you, church, without love and compassion and forgiveness, we're not shining a lot of Jesus because what comes out of us is hate and, and, and discontent and we come out with no compassion and we come out with unforgiveness. Then we are hiding under a bushel and we're not shining like Jesus called us to shine. Come on, amen. His light shines through how? How does His light shine? I'm going to start this thing off right. How about attitude? How about attitudes? Our light shines through our attitude. Our light can shine through our words. Oh, let me, let me, let me help you. My light shines through my attitude, my words, and the deeds that I do. Amen? When people see that our lives have been changed so that we have Jesus' values and, and the values that Jesus said is important uh, is, is number one, to see God working in us. Amen? But, but here's the thing that kind of makes me think. We see redeemed people that, that, that are, are believing and saying, I believe, but they're more inclined to not believe. Do you believe in Jesus? Why, yeah, pastor, I believe it. I've heard it. I know I believe it. Do you believe he lives? Yeah, well, I've heard that too. No, it ain't about hearing. It's about knowing. It's about knowing. Amen. 1 John 1, 5, 6 says this. God is light. And in him there is what? There is what? 1 John 5, 6. I may have put the wrong thing. It was chapter 1, verse. I don't know. This is the message we heard from him. Declared that God is light. And in him is What? I'm just wondering if we got the same Bible because it says it there too. Amen. No darkness at all. I don't know if you heard me, but he don't he does not have any darkness. And in verse six, it goes on to say, in verse six, it says, and this is the condemnation. And if, oh, y'all got me going way too. If we say that we have fellowship with him and do what? We do what? And we do not what? You say, Pastor, why you got us having to say that? Because I want you to get it today. I want you to hear it. I want you to see it. I want you to read it. Because it's important that if we say that we have fellowship with Jesus and we still walk in darkness, the Bible says we lie and we do not practice the truth. Well, that's just a little hard, Pastor. Well, it's hard sometimes to hear the truth. Amen. I can get up here and give you a little patty cake message, tell you we're all going to heaven and head right on straight to hell, but I ain't doing that, amen? I'm going to tell you the truth to keep you out of hell and get you to heaven, amen? Because I believe the church has got to get back to a place of being the light and not representing darkness, amen? Hallelujah. Somebody give Jesus just a praise, amen? Just for a minute, amen? In John, it tells us, it says... Three, chapter 3, verse 19, it says, And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world. Do you understand? Jesus is the light of the world. Amen? And men, listen, men 
and women, I'm going to put both of you in there just to make it right, and men and women love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. It says we're evil, but they're still evil, amen? The thing is, is the reason people enjoy darkness is because if you, you find somebody that's living in sin, they find some good sinners to hang out with. They're not hanging out with church people no more. They ain't hanging out with people that are lights. They ain't hanging out with no light. Because light has something that will happen. How many's, how many's ever walked in a dark room and thought, I'm going to try to find my way through? I don't need a flashlight. I don't need nothing. I know my way through. I ain't going to tell the whole story, but you know, one night, one, this happened right here in TPF. Uh, every Wednesday, uh, every Wednesday night, uh, we come in, we set up chairs and, and get ready for Bible study. Well, I came in earlier, I think the night before or Monday, and I thought, while I'm here, I'm just going to go ahead and set up Wednesday night. Well, Brad didn't know that. <laughs> Brad up there running the video camera didn't know that. He always comes early. He's probably one of the first ones here for most of the time, and he walks in. And uh, he walks in, and hello, you know, I've walked in this darkness before. Anybody can walk through this church. I mean, if you know the way, because the light switch is in the sound booth, and you got to walk in darkness to get to the light around here, amen? <laughs> and the thing is, is they walk through that dark spot back there, and all of a sudden, no lights are on, and all of a sudden, we get here, and we hear about the, the incident that took place. And the incident that took place was Brad had walked in and found some chairs, Wondering where they came from. Now, he had walked that path I don't know how many times. Let me tell you something. When you're in the darkness and you're in sin, you think it gets easy. And you think, I got this. Sin ain't got nothing on me. I got this. There ain't no consequences for it. I'm just walking along in sin. I'm just walking along in the darkness. It's okay. Nobody knows. And then somebody flips on the light. And you see things you've never seen before. And you see the things that God has for you. And then you feel guilty about where you are. See, when men and women are living in the darkness and they're living in a dark place, uh, they can't see the light of Jesus because if it does, it exposes what they are and who they are. You say, Pastor, you got, you got scripture on that? I'm glad you asked. Verse 20 says, Do everything. You can go ahead and say, For everyone, everyone practicing evil and does not come to the light, lest his deeds do get exposed. Let me tell you something, you flip a switch on somebody that's living in darkness, and my goodness, it'll come alive, amen? How many, I know nobody in here, but I've, I've been in some experiences in my life, and, and, and I, I've walked into rooms and flipped on a room light before, and how many know that when, when the house, and I don't, I'm not saying this for anybody or anything, but you just, you know, you all know this, you've been there, if you hadn't, then praise God you hadn't, but how many's ever dealt with roaches? I mean, Thomas only wanted to hear admit it, amen? Anybody, anybody else may want to admit it, your, your darkness. But anyway, roaches are something that love darkness, you know? And you say, Pastor, why, why are you talking about this? Because if you go in you flip a light on, I mean, and roaches are in, they go, Whoo! You know, a lot of times that's the way Christians are. They, 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 they're doing good as long as they're darkness. But you start talking about light. You start talking about Jesus. You start talking about the goodness of the Lord. You start talking about love and compassion and forgiveness and all these things. And then all of a sudden the light comes on. And all of a sudden some go woo right to Jesus and some just go off elsewhere. Amen? Because they run back to their darkness. Amen? Men love darkness. And verse 21 tells us, but he who does the truth will come to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen that they have been done in God. Come on, amen. So if no light shines from your life, either you have no relationship with Christ or you're bringing dishonor to him. Come on, amen. I'm going to say it again. If no light is shining in your life, either you have no relationship with Christ or you're bringing dishonor to him. Amen. It's a sad thing for someone to proclaim Jesus as Lord and continue to live a sinful life. You say, Pastor, that is nothing I don't understand. Let me help you understand because what you do is you become a stumbling block for unbelievers. It is certainly not effective in convincing anyone that Christ has the power to transform lives because our responsibility is to have lives that transform by the Word and an inward presence of Christ that everyone can see His light reflected in our lives and in every situation. Do you understand what I'm talking about today? Amen? 
We love to talk about being the light. I'm talking about viewing yourself. I'm talking about looking deep in yourself and, and looking at that sin that's in your life. Looking at the thing that don't please God. Looking at the very things that are deep within your life that no one else knows about but you and God. But many times we want to be God. I'm going to say it one more time. Many times we want to be God. It's easy for us to judge. It's easy for us to point someone else out. Come on, amen. But the thing is, is that if we not shine in the light of Jesus, because Jesus never pointed anybody out. The only thing Jesus ever pointed out was the sin that was in their life and the love and compassion and forgiveness to give them. Come on, amen. Not to condemn them for their sin, but to love them so they come from their sin and be transformed. Amen. Philippians, the second chapter, tells us, Do all things, do all things, do everything without grumbling and arguing. That you may be blameless and innocent, children of God, without blemish, without blame, and be pure and without fault in a warped and crooked generation. Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky. Amen? Another version says, And you may shine as, as lights in the world, holding fast to the word of life. Holding fast to the word of life so that in the day of Christ I may be proud that I, I did not run in vain or I did not labor in vain. Come on, amen. I believe that it's important that as we live in a dark world full of lies and hate and confusion, would you say amen? We live in a lot of times people that attend church. They live in dark world. They live in full of lies and hate and confusion. God said he wasn't the author of confusion, but he's the author of peace. God's word tells us in Romans 13 chapter that the night is far spent and the day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off all the works of darkness. Come on, church. Amen. And let us put on. Everybody say put on. We need to put on the armor of light. We need to put on the armor of light again and begin to walk in this world and shine as Jesus shines. Amen. Putting on the whole armor of light here. And, and verse 13 goes on to tell us, and I want to read it, let us walk properly. I think this is important. Because many times it's, it, the, the light doesn't shine so much. Like I say earlier, Sundays it's easy to shine. It's throughout the week that when we, when we seem to fall short. Amen. Let us walk properly as in the day, not in reverently or drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife or envy, but verse 14 says, But put on the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm just telling you, the answer to, to the situation that you're facing, the situation you're going through, if you're looking for an answer, the answer is putting on Jesus Christ and making no provision for the flesh. Let, let me get out and talk to you. I said make no provision for the flesh. You say, Pastor, that sounds too easy. Well, it's easy when we're making no provision for the flesh. But many times we're given in to the flesh more than we're given in to the Spirit. The Bible says walk in the Spirit and you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. It says right here, make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. Now, many times people always want to think lust is just the sexual lust. But church, there's more lust than just sexual lust. Amen? There's a lot of lust. There's a lot of things people get. Well, I wish I had their truck. I wish I had their house. I wish I had their car. I wish I had their wife. I wish I had their husband. I wish I had their bills. Oh, they said, you think yours is bad? Visit my house. Amen. You know, there's always somebody got it worse. Come on. Amen. You think, you think your bills are bad? Just, just let me hand you mine for one month and you'll just go ahead and take yours back. Amen? I take yours and I might hand yours back. Come on. Amen? I'm just saying that many times lust is more than just... A lot of time we won't lust. We lust after the things of this life. I would like to have a million dollars. I think I'm going to spend my whole check at the casino see if I can win a million dollars. What's well, stupid. That's just stupid. Are you against the casino? No, I go to Chuck E. Cheese all the time. Amen. Let me get that my don't be talking about my casino. Amen. The child casino like Chuck E. Cheese is the best thing ever. Amen. You go there and you I'm 
Y'all too holy for me. Amen. I want you to understand something today that it's so easy to walk in the flesh. Anybody can do that. Anybody can walk in the flesh. But it takes a real man and a real woman to step up and walk in the spirit. It takes somebody that's got something that's like, you know what? I don't care what you say. I don't care what's going on. I'm not walking in the flesh no more. I'm walking in the spirit. How am I going to walk in the Spirit? That means I'm going to get in my Word. That means I'm going to pray. That means I'm going to talk to Jesus. I'm going to have a relationship with Jesus. I, I'm not so concerned about this or that. I'm concerned about me and Jesus. Amen? You know, there's old, old, old thing. I don't remember the song. I think it's a song, Me and Jesus got, got it all worked out or got it going or something. I don't know. But I know it talks about me and Jesus. I want me and Jesus working. Come on. Are you on you and Jesus working? Come on, how many want just you and Jesus? You get you and Jesus going, and I'll tell you right now, the lust of this world and this life will die beside you. Amen? Because the Lord's got so much more than the world. Let me just tell you a little bit about it. He's got golden streets. He's got gates of pearl. You say, Pastor, how you know all the things that the Bible says so? Amen? Well, how you believe the Bible? Well, how you believe uh, all that junk you read? Come on, Amen? I believe my Bible. I believe the Word of God. I believe that heaven has been built for me. He ain't building me no cabin on a hill. He's building me a mansion. Amen. I'm talking about some rooms. I'm talking about a place. I'm talking about a place that we can't even imagine. We can't even put our mind to. My eyes have not seen and my ears have not heard what God has prepared for every one of us that are willing to be the light and walk in the Spirit. I don't know if you're hearing me this morning, but Jesus is wanting you and I to walk in the Spirit. Amen. He's got a provision for us. But many times we choose the flesh over that. Come on, amen. Really? Really this life can't offer me none of that. Happiness is not how much money you got. Happiness is not in anything this life gives. True happiness is when you find Jesus. It's when you find Jesus, amen. That's the joy that you'll never surpass in this life to anything, amen. Matthew 5, Matthew 5, I got more to talk to you, amen. You are the light of the world. I mean, you are the light of the world. Come on, amen. The Bible says that Jesus told us we're a city that is set on a hill, cannot be hidden. We cannot hide, church. Verse 15, nor do, the light, do they light a lamp and put it under a bushel or a basket, but on a lamp stand and give light to all who are in the house. Come on, amen. Giving light to all who are in the house. And verse 16 says, Let your light so shine before men as I started with that you may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen. Our goal should never be bring recognition to me or to me, anyone else around me. But the recognition that I'm trying to bring is glory to my Father. Glory to my God. Amen. It's a matter of the heart. That's what it is. We've got to have a heartfelt kind of light amen Matthew 7 tells us and I got a lot of scripture I want to bring you today and when it says and why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye but you do not consider the plank in your own eye or one of my one of the guys Anthony over there on Saturday he he, he, he hit this kind of quick on that on Saturday deal. But, man, I was putting this together, Anthony, and I heard this scripture come back again. And I was like, oh, my goodness, I've got to, this is just it right here. Because many times it's easy to view everybody else but not ourselves. It's so easy to view D's fault and Jeff's fault and everybody else's fault. But we don't want to look at our own. It's easy to point out somebody else's sin, but then we want to look at our own sin. Because if you're talking about somebody, you're sinning. If you put your brother down, you're sinning. Because the Bible says you're a murderer. I ain't no murderer. If you talk about your brother and no love, you're a murderer. Oh, it's easy to find fault with somebody else. But then we go home, we don't look in the mirror. We don't listen to ourselves. We don't even record ourselves. You know, we already get a selfie done, you know, and, and, and take a selfie of all of us in here this morning. And you say, Pastor, you're just crazy. Yeah, I am. Just stay with me. Amen. You ain't seen crazy yet. Better, better shot. I'm a better camera fit person than that. <laughs> hey, 
Pastor, what are you doing? I'm taking a selfie. I got to get in it too. I said, Pastor, why do you take a selfie? Because a selfie not only views me, but it views everybody else in the room. I can take this picture back and I can pick some of you out. Let's see what you were doing. Well, I just said I can't talk about you. I'm a murderer. Amen. So, amen. You say, Pastor, this is just crazy. You'll never find this anywhere in Northwest Arkansas. I'm missing this side. All right. So now let's let's view ourselves. Come on, D. Let's view this real quick. Look here, we can zoom in. Now, now, now see the one thing I'm seeing here is everybody's really paying attention. Now Anthony's taking a picture of me while I'm taking a picture of him. <laughs> let's view this side. Oh my goodness, uh, I won't talk whose hair that is, but anyway. I'm viewing right now. That's how we like to go about it. We're viewing. It's just a prayer request. You know what? I got something to tell you now. I don't want you to go tell anybody else because I'm going to do it, all right? (laughs) Did you hear what I just said? Don't go tell anybody else because I'm going to. Don't be talking about about them because I'm going to be talking about them, all right? (laughs) We'll make sure the story's straight when you tell it, all right? Have you ever had somebody tell you a story and by the time it got to the end it was a different story? Let me tell you something. God in heaven is looking down today. He's got his selfie camera on. He's taking some pictures. And on Monday, he's taking a selfie from heaven. And uh, he gets another snapshot of us. And he might find us in a place where we're not doing what we should be doing. Are you listening to me? See, I'm not there. I'm not able to take a selfie. But God's always taking a selfie. God's always looking down on Monday and Friday and Saturday. And and when you think nobody's looking and no one knows, God Almighty knows. Come on, somebody give him some praise in the house. Amen. We can take selfies. Bottom line is God's always taking a selfie. Do you match up to shine as he shines? Do you match up? That wasn't even in my notes. That's just good for you. Amen. Just good for you. Just come to me. We just did it. Amen. But let's read this. It says, why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own eye? Verse 4 says this. And how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye and look at a plank is in your own eye? I mean, you know, a plank hanging out of your eye and you're like, Oh, you got something in your eye. Jennifer loves to pick at me. So, I won't tell too much. But we drive down the road. And I have hairs growing where they shouldn't grow anymore. (laughs) Quit growing hair. It growing out of the ear. You know what I'm saying? Some of you like, Pastor, get back to the message. I am. Just stay with me. But Jennifer's always, I'm driving down the road, you know, just talking, and she'll look over at me, and she'll start staring at me. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> then she reaches to her purse, and you hear, dun, 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 dun. Here she comes out with the tweezers. And she heads toward my ear, and I'm, like, trying to do this, and she's like, what gets me? Well, I'll tell you a minute. But she gets over, and she gets right there, and she goes, it's just one hair. Whoosh. It's like, ah! Oh! Anybody, anybody, anybody relate? And then I'll, I'll, I'll be driving down the road. She'll be like, let me look at the other ear. Come on, really? I'm driving. I got to watch the road. You want me to turn my head this way? Sometimes, sometimes some of you are driving down the road and God's looking in your life and he's looking at the things going on in your life. He hears the words come out of your mouth. And I just want to hear God sometime go, are you kidding me right now? Anybody? I mean, he's ever God tried to pull that plank out of your eye and you just can't do it. Amen. But this thing, I think we need to get it all removed out of our eye before we part picking on anybody else. Amen. And verse five. And Jennifer don't have a hair in her ear, so she's good. Verse 5 says, I like how it starts out, hypocrite. This, this fits it for everybody. Hypocrite, 
First remove the plank from your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Hypocrites, what it called. That's that's what that's called. It's called hypocrisy. It's called a hypocrite. And people, you know, always say, uh, you know, I've said this. You heard me say it two or three times, probably in the last few weeks. But the Bible, you know, I mean, I always talk about hypocrites, and 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 people always call the church a hypocrite. And because why? Because we don't shine as lights outside, and one of our own fail. Come on. Let me tell you, soldiers have more sense than than what we do sometimes. Amen. Soldiers are trained. The soldiers here today are trained, and I'm going to talk a little more next week, but soldiers are trained. When one gets wounded, they, they reach down and help them up. They don't leave them there to die. And the church has been the worst about it. Come on, amen. Oh, well, I can't believe. Well, I can't believe. Well, I can't believe. Get the plank out of your eye. Well, what I do is not as worse as what they did. Quit comparing your sin because sin is sin. Somebody say, man, I'm preaching right now. Amen. It's always easy to shine. It's always easy to shine as long as we're with other people that are shining. But it's so easy to fall short when we get in other people's business. Amen. Bible calls that busybodies. Well, I'm preaching this morning. It's always easy to shine a new diamond ring. How many's ever got a new diamond? It didn't have to be a diamond diamond. But how many know you get one of them rings and they just shine? And they just have a beautiful shine to them. And you're, you walk down the road and people are like, whoa, whoa, be careful with that thing. That diamond ring across the room may be shining, but over time, the shine on that ring will dull because of the dust that it collects. It's the same way sin will dull your shine as lights for Jesus because over time, we allow sin to creep in our lives. Come on, Amen. Our lives, which once sparkled and once shined with the joy of Christ, have now become clouded with the love for the things of this world. Now, I'm not telling you that we're all perfect, because none of us are perfect. There's only one perfect. His name is Jesus, and He's the one that does it all for us. Amen? But we're to strive to be like Him. Come on, amen? The problem is no one wants to view themselves and address their sin. Partly because it's going to impact others. There's four areas I want you to view your life today as we close. I want to go over these four areas with you. Number one, the Bible says in Romans 12, 2, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove that what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Somebody say amen. amen. Number two, James 3 and 8 says, But no man can tame the tongue because it is an unruly, evil, fool of deadly poison if you read on in James it says therewith we bless God and even with the Father and therewith we curse men which are made after the image or the similar of God out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing and he said my brother these things ought not so to be Because there's one thing you got to understand. God wants our mouth checked too. Amen. Because we take our speech seriously. And maybe you have heard this before. Maybe you've even said it. If you don't have anything nice to say. Many times we tell our kids that. But we don't live by it. If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say it at all. But then we'll turn right around and they hear us be the example and talk about somebody else. It's not bad advice for the adults too, amen? Words are powerful. Can I get an amen to that? Because words are powerful, can be used for good or bad. We need to check our words. Do they resemble Jesus' love and forgiveness? Or does it resemble the world's way, Satan's way of lies and condemnation and judgment. So number three, this one I know no one knows anything about. So hopefully when I tell this, you'll be surprised and you'll be amazed. And you will go, oh my goodness, people do that? But use social media, media wisely. People are watching what you post. 
whether they interact with your post or not, whether they like it or they don't or they comment or they don't, people are watching what you post. Think about the things that you've posted in the last week. Were they self-centered? Were they rude? What was your motive behind your post? You say, Pastor, why you got to talk about all these things? Because it's real. <laughs> to put others down or make them jealous. But most of all, our, on our own social media, does your post reflect Jesus? Does your post reflect you as a Christian? Can the world say they are a believer? Just because I post scriptures don't make me a Christian. But the polls that I put and talking about other things, it does, it does reflect. And church, we got to talk about this. As a Christian, if it fits with the world's way, then we have darkened the light of Jesus. Our place is to shine as Jesus. Amen. I mean, we're supposed to shine as Jesus in the world. And if we're to shine like Jesus then we are to proclaim to be a Christian and shine in a dark world and quit blending in. I said quit blending in. The last four, the fourth one. Consider other people's needs and help meet them. Amen. Encourage instead of criticize. Be patient, love, forgive. When you encounter a difficult situation or person, remember that they were made and they were loved by God above all. Luke 6.31 says this. Look at this. Luke 6.31 says, And just as you want men to do to you, do also to them likewise. Let me say it again. Just as you want men to do to you, do also to them likewise. How many know that it's so easy in this life that we can, we can, we want, we want everybody to forgive us. We want everybody to love us. We want everybody to welcome us. But then when it comes the other way around, we don't do that. Come on, Amen. The Bible says, just as you want men to do to you, do also to them likewise. Before you can be the light and before I can be the light to others, we got to take a look at our own life. Come on. Sin has dulled the evidence of Christ. And maybe it's time to stop, take a moment, ask God to reveal any sins. Will you stand in this building with me? I'm going to say it one more time. Maybe it's time to stop, take a moment. Ask God to reveal any sin that you might be ignoring in your own life. Say, Pastor, I, I'm, I'm good. I don't have any sins in my life. I don't have anything going on. I'm good. If there's something you keep repeating and you keep struggling with, it's a sin. It's an inward sin that you're ignoring. Today, you need to ask God for His forgiveness and help in changing your heart. In changing your heart today. Amen. The scripture tells us in John 8 chapter. Jesus was there before the religious people. And they came in with the, with the woman. That committed adultery. And she was standing there. And Jesus they wanted to stone her. Because according to the law she'd be stoned to death. Jesus wrote. Jesus got up. And Jesus said these words. He said woman where are thy accusers? Has no one condemned you? She said, no one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. I underline that because I think it's important that we get the part, go and sin no more, not go and do it some more. Not go do it again. Not do it, not do it more. But go and sin no more. Stop. Come on, somebody say amen. Then Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light. Listen, what he See, this is the part nobody ever reads. I, I read this passage and I was like, my goodness, where'd that come from? It's right there the whole time. Jesus, at the end of his message, he said, he spoke to them again saying, I am the light of the world. And he who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Amen. Come on and give Jesus some praise in this house this morning. Amen. He's worthy of all of our praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you bow your heads with me this morning, I, I just want to take a moment today. Lord, search our hearts. Search our life. Search everything within us. Search deep. God, search deep down in our heart. Today, God, I'm not going to call anybody out. I'm not going to point anybody out. I'm not going to do anything like that, God. 
But Lord, I want every person in this building to be honest with you. Not with me, but with you, God. I want to be honest with you today. And if you're here today, and there's some sin that's you know that's, that's, that's there that just keeps coming back at you. And you want it to really be gone. You really want to be free. Would you lift your hand this morning? I see the hand. I see them hands all over this place. There's hands. Hands all over this place. Hands all over this place today. Because there's things that get down in our lives that we like to ignore. But Jesus said, I, I want to bring the light. I want to bring the light to you. Amen. I don't, want to, I don't want to bring you before everybody. I don't want to do none of that. I want the light to be revealed. And the light is being revealed right now in you. You're looking. You're viewing yourself. Now, right now, let us all, every one of us, there were hands up all over this building. I want us all praying for one another. And I'm going to ask if any of these that, that raise your hand, and I'm going to ask if you want special prayer. Maybe you didn't lift your hand, but you want special prayer this morning. I'm going to give you that opportunity to come right now. I'm going to give you the opportunity to come. And then we're going to pray. We're going to pray together. We're going to pray as a whole. And you say, Pastor, I just can't come out. That's okay. I'll, I'll pray with you right where you are. Because I just want to give you an opportunity if you want special prayer. Amen. If anyone has any other need, you can come this morning. You don't have to be sin in your life. Whatever need it is. If you have a 